So the first thing I want to start with is the project structure. So what I mean by that is how should we, how should we structure machine learning code bases? What should be tested? How should we name different things? Um, and the way I think about it is the goal of a machine learning code base is to produce a prediction system. It's a system that's able to take input and produce prediction output. So it takes input, constructs networks with trained weights, because remember a machine learning system is part code, part weights, and then it makes predictions using that code and those weights. Now to generate the prediction system, there is potentially a separate code base that's the training system. Now they could live in the same repository, but conceptually they're different code bases and they might have different requirements. The training system processes raw data, runs experiments, and then manages the results, for example, picks the best model out of a number of experiments. And finally, the prediction system has to be deployed for some kind of end user access. And we call that the serving system. So the, the goal is to serve the predictions. Uh, ideally, it scales to demand if it's a web endpoint. Sometimes you have one user. Sometimes you have 1,000. Sometimes you have you know, hundreds of thousands of requests per, per minute. Um, and so we've got to be able to scale to that. Or alternatively, if you're deploying to, let's say, a phone, I could say, you know, satisfies the constraints of the system. Like, yes, we trained a prediction system. Can we actually serve predictions on our end user device? So the thing that comes into play in machine learning systems is the training data, training and validation data. So you kind of think of it as the training system and the data coming together to produce the prediction system. Now when you actually deploy the prediction system and now it's serving predictions, it's seeing a different type of data that we call production data. And we assume it's the same type of data as the training and validation data, but it often is not. Um, to test our prediction system, I like to make a conceptual difference between what I call functionality tests. And the role of the functionality tests is essentially to test the prediction system on just a few important examples. So stuff that you really want to get right, it would be very embarrassing to not get right, uh, or potentially it's crucial for whatever business reasons you have that on these examples you're not making a mistake. It should run pretty quickly. Ideally, you can just kind of run it as you develop things so that you know that you're not badly breaking things as you're developing. Uh, it should catch really the code regressions. So the idea is like, oh, I just made a typo in my code and now stuff doesn't work at all. That's the role of the functionality test is to make sure that that's true. Or so, uh, someone else is getting set up with my code base. I want them to be able to run the prediction test at least. Then I know that they have at least some kind of baseline. But then there's also validation tests. And the goal there is to test the prediction system on some kind of validation set. So it's trained on the training set. And then maybe we care about performance on a validation set. We start from process data, uh, so not necessarily raw data. And then it should run in like less than an hour. And the idea is that like every time we push code to our continuous integration system, we'll run the validation tests, make sure the accuracy is not decreasing, not catching us off guard. And the idea is to catch model regressions. So maybe I introduce a new type of model or I update the weights. Uh, it'll take me too long on my local machine to just run it on all of my validation samples, but I'll push it to my continuous integration system. It'll run there. I'll get alerted if, it, if, it's, a, if it's a regression in performance. The training system, like I said, is kind of conceptually different code base, and it should have its own tests. So what you want to do here is really test the full training pipeline. You want to be able to go from the raw data, so ideally just even download the data. Um, you want to run it in like less than a day, ideally. Most models, I think, are trainable in less than a day. Uh, to, and then the, the goal here is to catch upstream regressions. So what do I mean by that? Let's say your raw data is generated from some kind of process that runs and it touches your logs in your database and like some images you put somewhere. So at some point, someone else working on the, whatever you're working on changes the database schema. And so now the training data that you're pulling down is in a different format than what you're used to. 
So that's not going to break your prediction system because that's already trained, but it will break your training system. And the only way you'll find out is uh, next time you train. And if you train like every year, then you'll find out in the year that like a bunch of things are broken and, and you don't know what exactly. You know, there's a schema change, the images may have been deleted, something else might have happened, TensorFlow got updated, now it doesn't train. Um, and the idea is that with the training system tests, you run them on a regular schedule. And so as soon as something changes, you're able to catch it very quickly and then figure out what, what, it, what it was and fix it. Lastly, for the serving system, there's no tests because we actually don't know. You know, it's production data that we've never seen before coming in. And we don't know what it's supposed to uh, be predicted as. So we think of this as monitoring instead of tests. The basic thing for any kind of serving system is we just want to know, is it up? Is it serving predictions? Are there errors? But for a machine learning system specifically, we also want to know, is the data distribution roughly the same as the training data distribution that we trained on? So an example could be um, you trained on you know, images 256 by 256 pixels, and that's what your users used to be sending you. But then something changed, and now they're sending you, you know, 1024 by 1024. Um, that might have bad effects down the line. So it'd be nice to get alerted as soon as that changes. Or potentially, you used to get black and white images, and now all of a sudden you're getting color images or grayscale images. So they'd use, you want to catch service and production data regressions. So I want to like leave the full version of the slide up for a second and see if you guys have any questions.